Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. 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 You may be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what you have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Amen. Please join me in reading... Uh, the 111th Psalm. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. O Lord, your work is full of majesty and splendor. Your righteousness endures forever. You make your marvelous works to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you. You are ever mindful of your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people. You commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. 
but take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Or if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, these weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I, I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, O Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today's gospel reading is taken from the first chapter of Mark. We're still very much at the beginning of Jesus' ministry still well within the territory of firsts. So last week, we heard about the calling of the first disciples, those fishermen who left their nets to follow Jesus. And today, as the story continues, we hear about Jesus' first public address to a synagogue community. And importantly, his first encounter with resistance. Jesus is confronted in the midst of his proclamation by a, a man with an unclean spirit whom he silences and from whom he draws out that unclean spirit amidst convulsions and cries. This is a scene of high drama and I dare say this encounter is, to say the least, quite strange to us. We don't typically encounter exorcism outside of fiction or film. So how do we make a cultural translation of, of what happened that day? Are we in the realm of demonic possession here? Or was Jesus witness to a spectacular and, and tragic breakdown of someone's mental health? We don't know. And frankly, I, I think it's not very useful to speculate about the nature or the particulars of that event. There is simply too much distance between us and that ancient event for us to know quite what was going on that day. Which suggests to me that the value of this story to us comes perhaps in seeing it in broad strokes and seeing it within the larger movement that Jesus inaugurates in this opening chapter of the Gospel. 
Remember, Jesus has come to announce a new kingdom, God's kingdom, a new way of life that offers extraordinary freedom and belonging, that offers hope and good news, that offers justice to those to whom it has been denied, and purpose for those who have known despair. Upon hearing that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, the four fish catchers immediately go with Jesus. They see a place for themselves in that reality he describes, and they drop everything to become a part of it. We get the impression that the listeners in the synagogue at Capernaum on that Sabbath day are not far behind the fishermen. They listen with rapt attention. They are astounded and astonished at what Jesus teaches them. But then, one man throws up his defenses and cries out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? This is the voice of one who, for whatever reason, can't hear the promise in Jesus' words, but only the threat of disruption. And he's not entirely wrong. Jesus has come to shake things to their very foundation. That can sound like destruction, especially if we've become used to the things that support us. Even, dare I say, the things that possess us. We are possessed and held captive by many things. There's a quality of unfreedom about our lives, collectively and, and often at a personal level too. Maybe we're gripped by a spirit of fear or anxiety. Maybe it's anger or despair that holds you. Maybe it's pride. That means never letting people see what's really going on in your life. Maybe the craving for comfort eclipses you from ever taking risks. Or maybe it's a craving for novelty that possesses you so you never really settle into those commitments that would claim you for the long term. I don't personally have to go very far to find these lesser angels. I'm acquainted with all of them in my own heart and mind. And then we can look around and see the, the patterns that constantly create unfreedom and injustice for so many. The same patterns that grip us and seem impossible to break. We see racism or homophobia we see addictions to shopping or scrolling through our phones. We see nationalism and its latest variant, vaccine nationalism. Perhaps these are the unclean spirits of our time. The powerful, sometimes hard to put a finger on, but we are aware of them nonetheless. We see them out there and we see them in here. And to all of this, Jesus comes with good news. He comes to oppose whatever forces of evil or malice would rob the children of God of all that God hopes and intends for us. Now, I have never been someone to preach that all you need is Jesus, that strikes me as a bit too simplistic a way of saying it. But I will say that these gospel stories, these stories of Jesus, they breathe a hope that I can't live without. In them I read of lives changed and barriers overcome. Never all at once, but again and again. One life, one moment at a time. Today it's the story of that man in the synagogue who spoke up, one translation says squawked, 
from the caged part of his heart. He showed the worst and hurting part of himself. And Jesus worked with that. He called out the unclean spirit so that he could call the whole person into new life, new hope, new community. There's something quite subtle and extraordinary in the way that Jesus interacts with this man in the synagogue. Never once is that man identified completely with this voice or, or spirit that is speaking through him. The two seem somehow separate, so that Jesus is able to see the entirety, the wholeness, the goodness, and the promise in this person, and is able to act in a way of healing, through whatever mysterious powers or means that was, but to bring a person to his best self, to separate him from the things that have become stumbling blocks and barriers. So I wonder then, I think today this gospel reading gives us the opportunity, the opportunity to examine our resistance to Jesus' invitation to a better way. Maybe you have something to squawk about. Maybe I do. But beneath that and beyond that, Christ is calling. He is calling you, calling me to a deeper relationship, to a deeper community. Maybe this is a day to look at the refrains that we use ourselves that keep us from experiencing the fullness of God's promise. Or maybe this is a time to examine as communities, what are the refrains or the, the complaints, the, the habits of resistance that stop us from being who God could create us into. Epiphany, this season that we are still in, is a time to celebrate the light that goes out to all corners of the world, all corners perhaps of our hearts. And perhaps it's reassuring in that to know that even when that light encounters resistance, even when the going isn't easy, it keeps, it keeps happening, it keeps traversing those things that would limit and constrain. After each person, sorry, each person that Jesus healed as he went about his ministry, each of those people was, be able, was able to become an agent of healing to those around them. This is how the light travels. This is how the good news gets from place to place. Each person Jesus called became one who would call others to experience and to live the good news. So the good that God intends for all God's children could reach and grow, even to our own day. Thanks be to God. I invite those who would like to make an affirmation of faith to stand together with me as we say. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The prayers of the people, you're welcome to sit or kneel as you're comfortable. Let us 
pray in faith to God our Father, to his Son Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Igreja Episcopal Anglicana do Brazil, along with the parishes of Court Hill and St. Paul's, Charlottetown PEI, we pray for the riches of God's grace. Lord, have mercy. For the church and the living God throughout the world, let us ask the riches of his grace. Lord, have mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, especially our Bishop Sandra, our Interim Rector Nicole, and Bruce, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ Lord, have mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. For all who are in need of God's healing grace, Gloria, Connie, Heidi, Anne, Kathleen, Rob, Dawn and Betty, Sylvia, Roger, Vange, Tracy, Becca, Kathy, Willie, Annalie, Louisa, Bill, Jerry, Bob, Jean, Robert, Beth, Jean and Betty, Andrew, Pam, Audrey, Danilo, Tom, Steve, Talia, Sasha, and Jean. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the Prime Minister of this country, and for all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace, let us ask the strength of God. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For the parish of Horton, in search of a new rector, let us ask for the wisdom of God. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity, let us ask for the light of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask for the peace of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Loving God, whose peace passes all our understanding, as we face this present pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may we hear your voice bringing calm to the storms of our time. Strengthen those who work to limit the spread of infection and those who seek to care for the sick and keep us mindful of those most vulnerable. May we shape our living to protect one another and may our changing habits, practices and sacrifices be for the greater love of our community and all your people. Amen. Amen. Let us gather our prayers and the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we bring forth our gifts for the good of the church and the good of God's world, we receive also the gift of music. Mm.
Let us pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and evermore. Amen. I'll take just a quick moment to, uh, to mention some of the announcements that are here in the bulletin and uh, a couple of others as well. I want to say that last Sunday afternoon there was a really, a really wonderful celebration of all of the churches in Wolfville uh, gathering to mark the end of the, prayer, uh, the week of prayer for Christian unity. That's certainly not the end of Christian unity, in fact. <laughs> we're, somewhere, we're somewhere probably quite near the beginning of that. Um, and locally here at St. John's, today is, uh, is the day that the Society of Friends, the Quakers, will begin having uh, their weekly meetings for worship in, in the, uh, the space just outside the sanctuary there. Um, this is on a trial basis for their community as they, are, um, as they are looking for where they are called to make home in this time. Um, and I do want to say to you, it's worth, worth passing along, that um, when they met here before, they were, really, um, they were really impressed by not just the space, but the sense of prayer soaked into the building, that that was part of their experience of worship. And so um, we welcome them today. And part of welcoming them means if you are one of the people who tends to come and go through the church building, just don't come and go between 3 and 5 in the afternoon on a Sunday so that they can have their, their time. Um, other notes in the bulletin, we had our parish council meeting uh, last week, and so we're gearing up for the annual meeting. Reports should, should be flooding in any time now. That's a great, <laughs> riveting reading. It'll be good. Uh, um, thanks so much for coming in the back door today. That seems to kind of answer the, the questions about how to avoid um, a traffic jam at the door as people are coming in. Um, and certainly when you leave, you know, exit through, I feel like a stewardess here, exit through, <laughs> through either door. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting to get some reports, but I need your report by Friday. Give me time to get the whole book together and get approved and everything. So if you've made a report last year, then you'll probably need to make one this year. So I'm probably waiting on probably half the reports. So please, um, if you can see that, I'd greatly appreciate it. The other thing I wanted to make a note of is that um, Bob and Donna Thomas, have donated up to us a brand new walker, and I guess you call it a quad cane. Is that the proper name, mm -hmm. Denise, the quad cane? Four feet, yeah. Four feet, yeah. It's out by the front door, they're both brand new. Uh, they, anytime you're in the building or you need a little extra help getting to the car, please use it. Um, and uh, it was a donating, donation from the Thomases. Thank you. All right, so we conclude uh, uh, with song, our closing hymn is number 306, oh, for a thousand tons to sing.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.